My name's Walt. I work as night watchman here at Fred's Wax Museum to put myself through criminology college. It used to be very lonely until recently when I plugged in my crime computer. Suddenly, oscillating vibrations brought to life three legendary monsters. Dracula. The werewolf. And Frankenstein. Creatures hated and feared for centuries now determined to make up for their past misbehaving by fighting crime wherever they find it. Together, we're the Monster Squad! every poison known to medical science. I am going to drink them all in one gulp. Uh, don't do it, Walt. What's wrong? Is it money you need? Relax, guys. I've invented the universal antidote. One bite from this star-shaped cookie should do it. What happens if it doesn't work? I'll be dead as a doornail in seven seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Walter, if you're alive, say something to us. It worked. I've never felt better in my life. I want each one of you to carry one of these in your belt at all times for emergency. <laughs> Not one. Yes, sir. The whole thing? Yes, sir. Bad news, Walter? The worst possible kind. Highly placed government officials have just informed me that the Washington Monument has disappeared. The monument to the father of our country, but where, when, who? And how? Maybe some foreign country kidnapped it. Maybe there's a bulletin about it on the top secret communication band. For authorized personnel only. No one without official clearance should hear this. Mount Rushmore has vanished. Government officials say that the monuments have been stolen. Men, without our national monuments, what are we? A land without honor. A country without tradition. The very symbols of our democracy. The land of the free. Home of the brave. We're never as heard of discouraging words. Lovely sentiments, guys, but now is not the time for sentiment. We've got to put on our thinking caps. Now, two of our national monuments have been stolen, right? Is it likely that the culprit, or culprits, would stop at a mere two? No. Gentlemen, <laughs> evil is not so easily satiated. Well, how do we know where they will strike next? Figure it out. What else is there? The Statue of Liberty. Right, Frank. Go over there and stand guard. What else? The Empire State Building. Good, Bruce. You trot over there and keep an eye on the place. What about the Golden Gate Bridge? Good thinking, Drac. You hang out over there. I'll stay here and wait for further reports. Let's go, squad! Now, my faithful but stupid underlings, Mumbo and Jumbo, I shall reveal to you my plans to avenge myself on a perfidious government. You mean the good old USA? I mean the duplicitous government that tricked me into buying a thousand acres of barren land here in Arizona under the impression that they were going to build an airport on it. And did they build an airport on it? No, they did not build an airport on it. Oh, the duplicity of it all, the chicanery. It's enough to make a patriot like myself quiver with rage. <laughs> but now, my fine, freakish friends, I am getting even by stealing 
all the national monuments. And I will exhibit them here on my thousand acres of hitherto worthless land. People will flock from hither and thither to see them. And to see them, they will pay five dollars a head for adults, half price for children, and uh, nothing, of course, for senior citizens. <laughs> I shall reap a veritable bonanza. I don't get it. Uh, how can you steal a monument? They're pretty big, aren't they? That head, I will not steal them big. I will miniature them in the wizard presto changer. Voila, the Washington Monument. Listen to all the tourists yelping inside. <laughs> Nobody ain't gonna pay money to see a little monument like that, unless you get magnifying glasses. I have heard of people who don't know anything. You don't even suspect anything. They're not gonna see them like that. After the heat's off, we'll run them through the presto changer backwards and make them life-size again here in Wizardland. <laughs> now, for our next batch of national monuments. <laughs> First, the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Ta -da! Next, the Golden Gate Bridge. And finally, the Empire State Building. Track, what'd you learn in San Francisco? Well, I went to the Golden Gate Bridge, as you told me. And? Well, there I was, flying in formation with a group of seagulls. Jonathan and George were there. Will you please get to the point? Well, there was the bridge underneath me. There were people coming to work, there were people going to work, there were people going on vacation. Never mind all that. Right before my eyes, the bridge disappears. Vanished? The traffic is snarled, the cable cars aren't running, the city has come to a complete halt. I better check in with Bruce and Frank, see if they have any news. This is Chamber of Horrors calling the Green Machine. Come in, Frank. Do you read me? I'll try Bruce. This is Chamber of Horrors calling Furball. Come in, Bruce. This is Walter Frankenstein. Walter Wolfman, do you read me? They're coming in. You'll have to speak up, guys. I can't hear you. I am. But something's happened. I'm only a tenth of an inch tall. Louder. I still can't hear you. Why did you almost blew me off my feet? I give up. We'll have to try again later. Maybe I can get Bruce on the communicator. Calling Bruce. Bruce, come in. Roger. You get off the line, Roger. I want to talk to Bruce. <laughs> oh, this is Bruce, but I'm shrunk. You're lucky. I'm down to a tenth of an inch. Where are you? I can't figure it out. Where are you? I don't know, and I'm not sticking my head outside to find out. There's an owl out there as big as an ostrich. I'm afraid I'm going to wind up on his menu as an appetizer. <laughs> What a horrible way to go. He must have been in the Statue of Liberty just with vanity. I'm afraid so. And Bruce must have been in the Empire State Building when it disappeared. Wait a minute. We just heard their voices, didn't we? That means they must still be alive. Of course. 
horse track. That's the one bright spot on an otherwise gloomy day. Now we just have to figure out where they are. Precisely. <laughs> How do we do, Bob? By means of triangulation and vector trigonometry, we should be able to pinpoint their exact location. An analysis of the sound waves indicate they're on a plot of ground that was supposed to have an airport on it, but the project was never consummated. A lot of people who thought the deal was sure to go through were sorely disappointed. A fat lot of good that does. That could mean most of California, half of Florida, and part of Cleveland. <laughs> there it is, Drac. Exactly 12 and 2 tenths miles outside of Phoenix. Eureka! Hope springs eternal. Drac, their fate is on your shoulders. <laughs> Next, I think I'll stick. Jumbo, answer the door. I didn't hear it ring. Well, why wait to the last moment? Oh. <laughs> yes. Next, I think I'll steal Mount Everest. Oh, it would be a delightful ski slope for here in heaven. What can I do for you? Ask not what you can do for me. Ask what you can do for yourself. I don't understand. You will in time, sir. I see from the sign on your door that you are a wizard. Ah, yes, indeedy. Is it the wizard at your service? And a sorcerer. Oh, yes, indeedy. Make that no, indeedy. What kind of a sorcerer would call himself a sorcerer without a sorcerer's apprentice? Which is exactly why I'm here, sir. Sorry, Mac. This is a one-man operation. <laughs> that is your loss, Blizzard. That is it. Is it the wizard? Too bad. You have just turned down a person who has worked with Houdini. You? You? You worked under the great Houdini? Under him? <laughs> Who do you think taught him the escape from the coffin trick? <laughs> I scoff at you. I was doing the very same trick when I was a babe in arms. But tell me, what do you think of this one? Do you have a two dollar bill? Hmm, thank you. <laughs> Very interesting, but there is only a dollar ninety-five here. I could go broke doing this trick. <sighs> there, one ninety-five and five makes two dollars, and an extra penny for good luck. <laughs> and now for my encore, a demonstration of the wizard magic super king size enlarger reducer machine. <laughs> Interesting trick, but really rather small time. I suppose you could do better, wise guy. If I couldn't, I would resign from SAG, huh? the Sorcerer's Apprentice Guild. Allow me to demonstrate. That is for me to know and you to find out. <laughs> of course, if you were to make me your assistant, I might let you in on it. Give me a couple of minutes to think about it. Frank, Bruce, are you in there? 
Oh, there you are. <laughs> it is a good thing I have 20-20 bat vision or I'd never be able to see you. Now the rest of you, stay in there. You are much safer. Don't worry. I will have you back to normal in two shakes of a bat's tail. You, Benedict Arnold, we have foiled you again. That's what you think. These magic sparks will give you a laugh. <laughs> That's a heck of a way to drop your friend. His fiendish friends have been dropped. Find them. <laughs> small to see. Oh, that's what you think. The victims of it and the wizard never get out of his clutch. <laughs> <laughs> Here are your friends. They will make a toothsome delicacy. Rabbit stew, ragu, a la flopsy, mopsy, and cottontail. Oh, 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 Frank is a rabbit and Bruce is a bunny. <laughs> but it isn't very <laughs> Track? <laughs> Anyone, come in! Track, I can hear you laughing. I guess that means everything's A-OK, -okay, right? Track? What's the joke? I can use a good laugh myself. Come on, Jack, at least give me the punchline. <laughs> laughing gas! <laughs> laughing gas! No wonder I didn't get the joke. It's not a joke. Stand by, Drax. <laughs> now, Drax, listen very carefully. There is only one way to counteract that gas. You have got to take the universal antidote at once. <laughs> it's on your belt. <laughs> All right. The universal antidote is very effective and very tasty. Uh, now all I have to do is turn my chemo sabis back into normal. <laughs> Bruce, I will try to get you back to normal as soon as I can. Huh? Be patient. Yeah. Alakazam. Holy cacao, change back into people, and I mean right now. <laughs> Something seems to have gone wrong. One for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, and away we go. Dirt and cactus like Spuria. Is Arizona. Walter, I am in trouble. What can I do? What is the magic word to turn cactus plants back into people? Gee, I don't know, Drac. Why don't you try abracadabra? That's what Mandrake the magician always used to say on TV. Abracadabra! <laughs> it worked. Friends, be patient. I will just take you back to the wizard's enlarger and make you better. Oh, oh, oh. 
<laughs> so you've lost your laughing feeling. Let this be a lesson to you. Virtue is its own reward. Let's get him! <laughs> Enough of this child's play. The time has come for a duel to the finish. Here, my pasty-faced poser. Catch this invisible sword and let's have at it. Oh, nicely balanced. Oh, well-tempered steel. I feel it is only fair to warn you, sir, that I have dueled with Cyrano the Bergerac and cut off his nose, fenced with Scaramouche, sliced off his ear. I vanquished Athos, Porthos, Aramis, and D'Artagnan with one wing tied behind my back and diminished the seven dwarfs in one swell hop. Excellent! Finally, a foeman worthy of my skill. On guard! Avant garde! <laughs> 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 That's a lot littler than that. Maybe we can put him through again. <laughs> he will be punished enough when the police come to pick him and his bully boys up. Justice will prevail. Oh! Well, thanks a lot, you guys. All of you did a swell job. Those monuments have been returned, and all of America is in your debt. We only did what any three red-blooded patriots would have done. I wish you wouldn't use that word. Blood? Patriot. They made me a member of the Transylvania Legion for doing excellent work in one of our foreign wars. Do you have any idea how much it has cost me in dues for over 400 years? It is more difficult to leave one of those clubs than a book club.